My name is Shai Honavar. I am a research associate at Drexel University. I've been trained as a sea turtle biologist and I did my PhD studying the Olive Ridley sea turtles in Central America here at Drexel University. And that is how I met uh, Dr. Hearn at the biology department. Well, Shia walked into my office, I guess now about six, seven years ago, and basically offered to help me with the sea turtles. We had taken over an abandoned sea turtle project on the western coast of Africa in the country of Equatorial Guinea. We wanted to protect them, but I don't know much about turtles. And so it turns out that Shia kind of said, well, I can help you. And at the same time, there is this, this beautiful, beautiful monkey on the island, which is called the drill monkey. We realized that there was a threat of bushmeat hunting that was eliminating the larger animals. And the largest animals on the island are the seven species of monkeys and then also the nesting sea turtles. And the drill is the largest of those and therefore perhaps even more popular for bushmeat hunting. So the idea was how could we protect the monkeys and in protecting the monkeys probably protect the rest of the wildlife including the nesting sea turtles and all the other biodiversity because at that point that was the only threat to wildlife on the island. For the past um, five, six years now, I have been to the island every year where I stay on the island six months out of a year and I take um, a group of students with me. One of my volunteers was Justin Jay, who is also a sea turtle biologist. He was very interested in doing documentaries and mainly doing conservation documentaries. And it was just a dream of him to do something like that. Because the sea turtle work was mainly done at night, during the day, we didn't have a lot of um, other stuff to do. We kind of started talking about, let's, let's go and see if we can find the drill monkeys in the forest because we know that they're there. There is signs of them. We started sitting in the, setting up different type of blinds um, in different parts of the forest and kind of trying to follow these animals when they're going from one tree to another tree so that we had footage from them at different sites and also kind of get an idea of the group size. So this was very useful for research purposes as well. Another important aspect is the educational aspect of it. And we then decided to take this footage and put it together in a in type of an educational documentary and, um, and show it to the people on the island. What I wanted to do was to get the local people interested in their own wildlife. Uh, and it's more than just like monkeys and sea turtles, but people can identify with monkeys and sea turtles. It's really more uh, all-encompassing. So the goal of the film is to educate Equatoguineans about the wildlife of their country. And not only the animals, but also the whole ecosystem. A lot of the local people have never gotten the chance to go to the southern part of the island where there is primary forest. And so we've kept our message very simple. We're trying to save the biodiversity in one small country on one small island. And so this is basically an opportunity to show the local community what they have in their own country and in their own forests and, and show them the value of wildlife as well as the economic um, benefits that wildlife and this pristine ecosystem can bring with, it, with itself. Um, I'm not sure how the world's biodiversity will be saved, but if it is saved, it will probably be partly, maybe largely, because of small organizations just hanging on fiercely and being very tenacious over relatively small issues, maybe just a species, maybe just a small area like we're doing. But that's how it's going to be won in the end, I believe.